We are continuing section 2.4, and actually we're going to spend one more day on this tomorrow as well. Um, yesterday we just threw in this idea of an algebraic proof. Right. Um, we're going to still see some more algebraic proofs today because, again, reminder, we're doing little baby steps. We're kind of just taking it easy, not just throwing you out the most challenging proof out there. Okay. What we're going to see today is... Um, some more of this same format that we saw yesterday, but we're going to add some things to it. Um, and then we're going to apply this to this idea of a ge geometric proof. Okay. Okay, so one thing you'll notice at the very start here, it talks about um, this idea of a two-column proof. There are three different forms of a, of a, a proof, and two-column by far is the most popular. Okay. Right? We have what's called paragraph proof. What do you want to guess what that's going to look like? Uh, a lot of words. Doesn't sound like that's what I'm going to choose so, in my favorite method. So, in a paragraph. And then there's also flow proof, which we'll get to kind of some exposure. Most of what Mrs. Hellgraby and I do in um, our classes, we'll use two-column proof. And two-column, just how it sounds, you're going to have two columns. Um, you're going to have, in those two columns, numbered, that's one thing that's different, statements and reasons, and I'll kind of give some description of that from yesterday, to show a logical order of your argument or your proof. So you're going to obviously have two columns. One column is your statements reason. So when we did an algebraic proof yesterday, that work from working through the actual algebraic equation. On the other side, the reasons is kind of describing how did I get from one step to the next, telling us the why. Right, so again, down here, it kind of gives you that description there. So statements is your work, your reasons, your justification, right? So some things you can use, definitions, which is really popular, properties, which we saw yesterday, postulates, and this idea of a theorem, which we haven't done a lot of that yet. Okay. We're always going to be starting with the given and we're ending with the proof. Just to give you an idea what that's going to look like, you have your two columns, kind of like a T-chart. Over here, your statements. And on, squeeze that in. And on the right, you're going to have your reasons. Then you're going to number. So if you have your first step, second step, and you're going to have your reason kind of paired up with that. Makes sense. So that sense. gives you kind of a format there. All right. We talked about some properties of equality in terms of our, um, you know, out the addition property of equality, the subtraction property of equality, these are just continuing on those properties of equality. We have the reflexive property of equality, which says for any segment AB, that AB will equal AB. The, their measures are equal. Well, it's the exact same segment, so that would make sense that its measure is equal to itself. When we're talking about angles, we can talk about how the, for any angle A, the measure of angle A will equal the measure of angle A. We talked about the reflexive property already. This yeah. is just in terms of the geometry. Here is the for segments and for angles what that would look like. Um, this reflexive property, we're going to see this more in a chapter or two where we're going to see the the need for it because right now, I, of course, it seems like a no-brainer mm -hmm. and it doesn't seem very helpful, but it will become helpful later. Um, this next one, we're talking about the symmetric property. This is the one that allows us just to flip the order. So if AB equals CD, then I could also say that the measure of CD would equal the measure of segment AB. Same thing for angles. The measure of angle A equals the measure of angle B. Then I can flip them and say the measure of angle B will equal the measure of angle A. It means the same thing, just rewritten. Just rewritten. Transitive property, again, we've seen these properties before, but the transitive property just says if I have two measures that are equal and notice that what one is equal to also equals something else in our next mm -hmm. the next equation we can go ahead and say okay well if they equal the exact same thing then these equal each other that's what we call the transitive property notice we can do it for segment measures but we can also do it for angle measures as well here measure of angle a is equal to the measure of angle b well that measure of angle b also equals the measure of angle c then a and c measures must be equal as well. And one thing I'm noticing here, all these properties are dealing with equality. Where we've thrown in this idea of congruence before in the earlier chapter, but now we're seeing that this specifically is talking about equality. So notice how the notation, how Mrs. Hercurvey say says the measure of this. There's no bar above the segment names, there's an M in front of the angle name. Absolutely. And that notation is really important. We'll get more and more comfortable with that as we go.
All right, now this next slide, uh, just to give you kind of an idea of some of these properties, some of these you'll notice we've seen before, um, but I try to th we try to throw in some reflexive and transitive type things that are newer. Um, it says use the property, so what's in this pinkish color here, to complete the statement. So what I want you to think about when you're doing these, I want you to think about what exactly does this property mean and apply that to the statement so we can fill in the blank that you're given. All right. Okay. Notice all of them are in if-then form. So the if part is what you're starting with and your conclusion, your then part, is kind of what follows after and we're going to try to figure out what will make this true. Okay. All right, so starting with impo, what does impo basically mean? It means I'm using the multiplication property of equality. So I'm multiplying something to both sides of my equation. So this is the equation you're basically starting with. So the question is, what am I multiplying to each side to make this true? Okay. So looking at the second equation, what I notice is different is the first one, BD equals 6. Now it's saying something times BD is equal to 2. So how do I get from... 6 to 2 is really yeah, my that, question. Yeah, that's a great idea there. Okay, well to get from 6 to 2, I could think I'm dividing by 3, but I'm using MPO. So I don't want to just write divide by 3, but dividing by 3 is really multiplying by 1 third. So if I multiply this by 1 third and multiply this by 1 third, that's going to get you this. So what do I fill in here? So 1 third of BD is equal to 2. Perfect. All right, part B transitive property. Now think about transitive. We've hit on this yesterday. Ms. Hargrave, we mentioned it again today. Basically you have two equality statements that have something in common to come up with a third equality statement. So my first equality statement is saying we have the measure of angle ABC is equal to the measure of DEF. Okay. And here's a blank equals the measure of angle STO. What do you think I'm going to put here? Well, typically we would see like the measure of angle DEF. That's the way that we saw it in our statement. Mm -hmm. Could it have been the ABC? It could, but then your in conclusion is going to be look a little bit different. Okay, yeah. But I like what Mrs. Hograve is saying here is that kind of where this one ends, this one where it begins. However, there is differences on this one. Sure, for sure. because they're equations, so both mm -hmm. sides are the same. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then the conclusion that I would make. Um, because they both have that measure of angle DEF in common, I would say the measure of angle ABC would then also equal the measure of angle STO. And that's because both of those measures equal the measure of D angle DEF. Right. Okay. All right, APO. Okay, that means I'm going to add something to both sides. So, oh, look at that. They've already said 17 plus the measure of angle STJ. So that means this equation here, I had to start by, so they've already just added 17 to one side. So if I add 17 to one side, I'm gonna have to add it to the other side. Yep, to keep it balanced. Okay. So if I add 17 to 42, I'm gonna get 59. There we go. All right, next one, reflexive. That's the one where it equals itself, right? Yeah, so okay, what so I write? HS. Yeah, HS and you don't have to HS. write, a lot of times I've seen people, students put SH. Okay, you don't need to re rewrite it. It's the same thing. Okay. Right? Reflection just means it equals, itself. equals itself. And notice that is the only one that doesn't have an if-then. Reflexive doesn't come up with something new or right. rewrite something. It's just literally saying something equals itself. All okay. right, substitution. If R equals 7.5 and LT equals 10 minus RL, then what can we cl conclude? Okay, well, substitution, I know I'm just taking something and putting it in its place. I already know what RL equals, so I'm going to put a 7.5 in place of the RL. So 10 minus a 7.5, that should get me to 2.5. Mm -hmm. So what would I write? So I'm going to write that LT should equal a 2.5. Good job. All right, symmetric, last one. All right, that's the one that just flips the order. So mm -hmm. I'm going to say that the measure of angle DBA is equal to the measure of angle MCS. And I like how you said it just flips the order. So you're given this true equality statement, you're just rewriting it, it means the same thing, but notice they're just flip-flopped. 